Recently, I have hatched a plan with the president and general manager of my agency, and it involves me temporarily relocating to a branch that's in my hometown. And of course, I was only too happy to take on the challenge of doing something different at no extra expense to the agency that I work for and where I can be close to my family and Jawide. So I had to pack up again, but this time I wanted to completely empty out my cubicle and give up one of the steel cabinets just in case a temporary relocation becomes permanent. It's always better to have a very minimal cubicle anyway. I did the packing up little by little for a few weeks. The first four cardboard boxes were taken by my brother sometime in September because he was scheduled to take a road trip to our hometown and there was space in his vehicle for my stuff. These four boxes right here, these were what he took. For the rest of my stuff, I had to use a cargo forwarding service and they did require more secure packaging. So I purchased these plastic boxes. These ones have a capacity of 120 liters. It says so right there on the box. And to make the lid more secure, I was advised by a guy at the hardware store to use a soldering iron to create small holes in the plastic that's big enough for a padlock or a zip tie. I purchased this kind of padlock for the boxes because they have thin, flexible metal braided cables instead of the usual rigid metal rod. Please forgive the unstable camera angle. I was focused more on watching what I was doing right here rather than on what the video would look like. When the holes I made weren't big enough for the padlock, I simply went back in with a soldering iron and made the holes bigger. Now I know these are just plastic boxes and are not really secure to begin with, no matter how many padlocks I use with it, but I really just wanted to prevent pilferage and show the cargo for water that I have done my due diligence in securing my stuff. The first box contained all of my old planner archives and journals and ephemera. I have a video about all of my archives and I will leave a link for you in the description box. All the other boxes contained a mixture of things, but the most items that I spent a lot of time packing are my fountain pen inks. These are glass bottles, so I had to wrap them individually in bubble wrap. When I have filled three boxes, I got the necessary clearances from my office to certify that these items were not the property of my agency, and then I called up Daily Overland, that's the cargo forwarder that I use. They are based in my hometown in Bicol. I will leave a link to their website in the description box. The next few days were spent packing up the rest of my stuff. I disconnected all of my extension cords, which I own personally, and then also emptied out this small drawer unit, which I actually have not looked inside of for about a year. Most of the stuff that was in here went to the trash, like expired makeup, old receipts, and things like that. I also got all of my thesis related books and photocopies from the dorm and brought them to the office so I can include them in the plastic boxes. The last box I packed was the one that contained my own laser printer. I wrapped it in two layers of bubble wrap. I have shown this printer before in a previous video. I will leave a link in the description box. This printer is what I use to print everything. My planner related stuff and thesis related stuff and work related stuff. It wasn't easy to pack the box neatly, but I did make sure that I bunched up some of the bubble wrap so there would be a little more cushioning between the printer and the walls of the box at the sides and at the bottom. Those two other boxes were also picked up by Daily Overland after I got clearance for them from my office. My last day at work was on the 8th of October and everything was already shipped off to my hometown at that point. The only things left were the iMac that belongs to the office and that external monitor which also belongs to the office. And also that white suitcase has a few more personal things that didn't fit into the boxes. I made it a point to bring that suitcase to the office on that day precisely for that purpose. And then at a little past 5 o'clock, I finally left my cubicle. I will not be seeing it for the rest of the year. I have already emailed our building management department that I have completely vacated this and they have confirmed that I have no accountability connected to this cubicle. They might reassign this to someone else and that's okay. I have been very productive here. This has been my zone 
since about 2012 and I was able to accomplish a lot of office work and creative tasks here. It has been a big part of my life and it's a little sad to say goodbye, but I also know that it has been good for me to have been here in this cubicle in this office. I might return, but I don't know where.